28, 16. Acts 28, 16. <coughs> Soldiers work together very well. They've proven it on the battlefield. And, brother and sister, they've proven it for life. They make commitments to each other that never go away. Now, Acts 28, 16. And when they were come to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. Paul was on his way to come before Caesar to stand and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was pulled out of all the criminals. He was pulled out of all the people that were on their way to prison. And he was allowed to live with a soldier. I don't think it's a coincidence that the centurion picked one of his soldiers to send Paul with. You see, by this time, Paul had proved the power of God to all of these people that were on their way to Rome. Come on now. Remember they were shipwrecked? And Paul told them, don't, don't, don't abandon the ship. Don't, don't, don't jump overboard. Stay together. Stay together. And if you don't stay together, we're all going to perish. They listened to what Paul had to say. They got out on the shore on the Isle of Melita. And on that island, they're there. All Everybody survived. No one died in the ocean. Somebody should have died, but nobody died. And, and, then, they, and then they were building a fire so they could warm. And, they could, and a snake came out of the fire and got on Paul. And, and, and Paul just shook it off. And everybody said, oh, well, he escaped the sea, but he, vengeance is still going to fall apart. He didn't even get sick, didn't swell up. See, God had used this good soldier, Paul, to, sh to show other people what it was to get the job done. And this centurion watched all that. So Paul was treated differently. <clears throat> this centurion took one of his trusted soldiers, one of his comrades, one of his buddies, one of his men. He said, here, you, you, this man of God needs to be given a little bit more leave. He needs to live in a house by himself because he's ministering to people. Even in his, in his arrest and on his way to his trial, he has the right to, 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 to minister. You see, this soldier was a servant to, his, to Paul and to his superior. He was a protector. He was a defender. We go all the way back to that swearing in ceremony, what we said. We have promised. We have vowed. We have put ourselves in the hands of our country. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed, officers appointed over me according to the regulations of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Well, brothers and sisters, veterans, we say thank you. Because you have lived up to these words in our behalf. You have put your life on the line. To, to keep America free, to keep democracy working. The very privilege that we have to gather together in this place today without any government interference, it's because our soldiers have paid the price. And I believe, I believe, very, very, very few, there are a few exceptions, but I'm glad that I can say thank you to my protectors, to my defenders. And folks, I want to say this to, to my servants. Every veteran is a servant. Amen. Every veteran is a protector. And every veteran is a defender. Thank you is all we have. Except behind our thank you becomes, comes along with our prayers our admiration, and our respect. We hear a lot about heroes today, but every one of these veterans that stood across here today are the true heroes of American history. They're the true heroes of American history. Because without them, there wouldn't be an America. So when we apply that to the spiritual, I want to doubly honor these veterans because they've not only 
They've not only proven themselves to be good soldiers for our nation, but they're proving themselves to be good soldiers for the Lord Jesus Christ in the army of the Lord.